Hi everyone, in this video we're going to review IXL topic S.7, Solving Equations with Word Problems. When we open up this topic on IXL, we notice that we're given the equation. So on the right hand side you'll notice I wrote step 1, the equation is written for you. Then it says step 2, define each variable. So when we look back at the equation that we're given, we notice that we're given two variables. We need to identify what each variable represents in order to continue. So let's look at this first question as an example together. This equation shows how the cost of a photography session is related to its duration in hours. So our equation is C equals 20 times D. The variable D represents the duration of the sessions in hours. So D equals the hours. Then it says the variable C represents the cost. So C represents cost. What is the duration in hours of a photography session that costs $20? Over here you'll notice step 3 says substitute the given value in for the correct variable. Well, we notice here that it says we're looking for a total of $20. Cost is $20, so that means that we're turning cost into the number 20. So over here, we're going to write 20. Everything else will remain the same. Now, step four, solve the equation like regular. So we draw our scale line, highlight our variable, and now we're going to work backwards to solve. So 20 times D, that's multiplication. The inverse of multiplication is division. Divide both sides by 20 to get D equal to 1. So one hour costs $20. All right, let's go on. This equation shows how the total amount of paper Denise's office has recycled depends on the number of weeks since they started the new recycling plan. Okay, number one. We have P equals 12W. The variable W represents the number of weeks the office has been on the new recycling plan. So W equals weeks. The variable P represents the total kilograms of papers recycled. P equals kilograms recycled. How many weeks will it take Denise's office to recycle a total of 12 kilograms of paper? So we see that weeks is what we're looking for because it says how many weeks and we see that a total of 12 kilograms of paper is what we're given. So we're going to substitute the number 12 in for the variable P. Everything else will remain the same. Now we can draw our scale line, highlight our variable, and isolate the variable. Again, we see multiplication. We're going to perform the inverse operation so division, and we are left with one week. Let's try another one. This equation shows how the total cost of visiting the History Museum as a member is related to the number of visits. So we're given the equation C equals V plus 23. The variable V represents the number of visits to the History Museum. So V equals visits. And the variable C represents the total cost. What is the maximum number of visits? So right away we're looking for visits, so that's going to remain our variable. A member of the History Museum can make for a total cost of $50. Cost, $50. 
So we're going to substitute the number 50 in for C. Everything else will remain the same. And now we'll solve. We see that we have a plus 23, so we need to do minus 23 from both sides. And when we do that, we'll see that we get a 27, oops, I'm just going to rewrite it, 27 visits. Okay, next question. This equation shows how the total number of stamps Pamela has in her collection is related to the amount of money she spends on additional stamps. S equals D. The variable D represents the amount of money. So D equals money. She spends on additional stamps and the variable S represents the total number of stamps in her collection. So S equals stamps she has. How much money, so we see right away, we're looking for the money. Does Pamela need to spend on new stamps in order to have a total of four stamps in her collection? So S is going to turn into the number four. We're gonna substitute four in for S. Everything else will stay the same and we will solve. Now, when we do this, we know that there's a little invisible one in front of our D. We also know that we would divide by one to get the D alone, bringing us right back to the original equation that we had of four equal to D. So we know that she needs $4 for four stamps. Okay, next question. This equation shows how the number of spools of thread that Wanda has left is related to the number of comforters that she makes. So we're given the equation S equals negative 3C plus 11. The variable C represents the number of comforters Wanda has made. So C equals comforters. Do you guys all know what a comforter is? Like the big heavy blanket that goes on your bed? And the variable S represents the number of spools of thread remaining. So S equals spools of thread. How many comforters, there's our variable, can Wanda make at most and still have eight spools of thread left? So S is going to turn into the number eight. So we're going to substitute 8 in for S. Everything else will stay the same. Draw our scale line, highlight our variable, and here we have a nice two-step equation. So first we see we have a plus 11, so we know we have to subtract 11 from both sides. The 11s will cancel out, we'll bring down negative 3C equals 8 minus 11 is also negative 3. C is not alone yet, so we're going to divide both sides by negative 3. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is going to be positive 1. So one comforter. Let's try a couple more. This equation shows how the amount of peanut butter Danielle has left is related to the number of sandwiches she makes. So we're given the equation P equals negative 2S plus 27. The variable S represents the number of sandwiches she makes. So S equals sandwiches. And the variable P represents the amount of peanut butter remaining. So P equals peanut butter. What is the maximum number of sandwiches? So we see right away, sandwiches is gonna stay our variable. Danielle can make if she wants to have 19 ounces of peanut butter left. So peanut butter is going to be replaced with the number 19. 
So we substitute 19 in for P. Everything else stays the same. And now we can solve. We're going to draw our line, highlight our variable. We see plus 27, so we know we have to first subtract 27 from both sides. We're going to bring down what we didn't use, so negative 2s is going to come down, and we're going to subtract 19 minus 27, which you can use a calculator if you have, will give us negative 8. And don't forget your equal sign. S is still not alone yet. We're going to divide both sides by negative 2 to get a final answer of positive 4. So she can make four sandwiches. All right, next question. Ooh, decimals. Okay, this equation shows how one's maple tree's height, one maple tree's height has changed with its age. So H equals 9.9A .9 plus 50. The variable A represents the age of the tree in years. So A equals age. And the variable h represents the height of the tree in inches. So height. How old was the maple tree? So we see that age is going to stay the variable when it was 99.5 inches tall. So height is going to turn into the number 99.5. So we're going to substitute 99.5 in for h. Everything else will remain the same. We'll draw that scale line. Oops, let's zoom it out a little bit. We're going to subtract 50 from both sides. You can use your calculator. Oops, I forgot to highlight my variable. And do 99.5 minus 50 to get you 49.5. Bring down 9.9a. We still want to get the a alone. Divide both sides by 9.9. Again, use your calculator to do 49.5 divided by 9.9. And you're going to get five as your answer for A. Okay, let's try two more and then I will set you free. Number seven. This equation shows how the cost of a corporate team building event depends on the number of attendees. So we're given the equation D equals 20.9A. The variable A represents the number of attendees. A equals attendees. So that's how many people are going. And the variable D represents the cost in dollars. How many attendees can be there? That's going to stay our variable. At most, if the budget for the corporate team building event is $62.70. We're going to substitute $62.70 in for D. Everything else will remain the same. We can now solve, draw our line, highlight our variable. We're going to divide both sides by 20.9. Again, you can take out the calculator on your phone, or if you have a calculator, that's perfect. Divide those two numbers, and we're going to get an answer of three. Three attendees. Okay, one more together, and then you're going to try some. This equation shows how the distance Jerry runs depends on the number of track practices he attends. So we're given the equation D equals 2P plus 25. The variable P represents the number of track team practices he attends. 
So P equals number of practices. And the variable D represents the distance he ran. In miles, how many track practices would it take? So number of practices is staying our variable for Jerry to run 31 miles. And we're going to substitute 31 in for D. Substitute in 31. Everything else is going to stay the same. Draw our line. Highlight our variable. Inverse order of operations. Minus 25, minus 25. 31 minus 25 is 6. Bring down the 2p. p is not alone yet. Divide both sides by 2. And we get an answer, again, of 3. So 3 practices. Brilliant. All right, go try some on your own. Good luck.